Uh, dear colleague, my name is uh, Stéphane Godry. I am uh, intensivist in uh, Avicenne Hospital uh, in Paris area. So I would like to thank the scientific committee uh, of the ACKM for the invitation uh, about this talk on uh, the wait and see approach in renal replacement therapy. Is it good? This is uh, the first talk on this uh, topic. I have no conflict of interest regarding uh, AKI or renal replacement therapy. Uh, in uh, 2012, the CADIGO guidelines state that absolute indication to start renal replacement therapy are life-threatening complications, such as refractory severe hyperkalemia, refractory severe metabolic acidosis, and pulmonary edema resistant to diuretics. So what is the definition of the wait and see approach? This is postpone renal replacement therapy in critically ill patients with severe AKI who have no life-threatening complication. And what are the questions on this approach? Does it reduce the need for RRT? Does it impact survival of our patients in ICU? And does it modify the time to renal function recovery? The adequate study design to answer this uh, difficult question is to compare strategy. Uh, in patients with AKI, you have to apply uh, in a randomized controlled trial, uh, two strategies, the early RRT strategy. In this strategy, all patients will receive RRT. And a delayed RRT strategy, in this strategy, some patients will receive RRT because they will uh, reach pre-specified criteria, and some patients will not receive RRT because they will recover or because they will die before to reach this criteria. Three major randomized control uh, trials have been published uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, the Akiki trial, uh, which was a multicenter randomized control trial, including more than 600 patients. The Elaine trial, a single center randomized control trial, including uh, 231 patients in surgical ICU. And the IDEAL ICU trial, a multicenter randomized control trial, including almost 500 patients uh, uh, in mixed ICU patients. It was septic patients. So for the uh, Akiki trial, the first finding is that uh, almost 50% of patients in the delayed group did not receive renal replacement therapy at the end of the follow-up. This is a very important difference between the two strategies. And as you can see, at the end of the study, there was no significant difference uh, uh, in, in terms of survival between the early and the delayed strategy. It was the same for the analysis of different subgroups, sepsis, uh, uh, severity scores, or a patient with ARDS. The modality, uh, the uh, timing of RRT did not impact uh, mortality. In the IDEAL ICU trial, uh, almost 40% of patients in the delayed strategy did not receive RRT. And the result on the survival is the same compared with Akiki trial. The delayed and the early strategy, you can see on this uh, Kaplan-Meier curve that the mortality uh, is very similar. In the Elaine trial, the delayed RRT strategy was associated with increased mortality after 90 days. However, in this trial, uh, the uh, inclusion criteria include fluid overload or worsening pulmonary edema. And as you can see, more than 70% of patients had uh, fluid overload or, pulmonary, or worsening pulmonary edema in this uh, trial. This uh, led some uh, experts uh, like uh, Norbert Lamer to a state about Elaine that Elaine investigated the effect of delaying uh, RRT in patients who really need it. Uh, severe pulmonary uh, edema is indeed universally recognized as an absolute indication for emergent RRT. Finally, this year, um, we published uh, in The Lancet this uh, systematic review and uh, uh, individual patient data uh, meta-analysis of randomized control trial in the field. And uh, um, we include in this meta-analysis uh, uh, nine studies. We had uh, 10 studies eligible, but we obtained 
the individual data from nine randomized control trials, including Elaine, Akiki, Ideal ICU, uh, among others. And uh, finally, we had the data from uh, we have the data we had the data from uh, uh, one thousand eight hundred seventy nine patients. And what are the um, the risk of bias in this meta analysis? You can see that the risk of bias is very low, and uh, we did not uh, find uh, heterogeneity across the study. The primary outcome was all cause of mortality at day 28, and uh, the result of the study is that there is no difference between the early and the delayed RT strategy. You can see an hazard ratio at 1.01, .01. and uh, the second result is that 42% of patients in the delayed group never received RT. This is a very important result. Uh, uh, among the secondary outcome, there was no significant difference, uh, even for 90 days mortality or mechanical ventilation free day or vasopressor free days. The analysis of uh, the analysis of different subgroup show no difference in mortality uh, between the two strategies. And what we can uh, conclude to this uh, with this uh, systematic review and meta analysis is that this is a, a very high level of evidence that the timing of ART initiation does not affect survival. Uh, in critically ill patients with severe AKI in the absence of urgent abdication uh, uh, for renal replacement therapy. This might uh, uh, reduce the use of RRT and thereby saving health resources. Few, uh, a few weeks ago, a START AKI uh, trial was published, and what we can say is that START AKI confirmed that the wait and see approach should be the standard of care. This very uh, important multicenter international randomized control trial include uh, uh, almost 3,000 patients, and uh, I think that Shen Baksho will discuss the result of the study uh, in the same session. So, what are the results? Uh, on the time to renal function recovery, does the wait and see approach uh, impact time to renal fun function recovery? It's a very important question. In the Akiki trial, we found that um, uh, re, uh, de the delayed strategy was associated with more rapid renal function recovery when you look at the adequate urine output or when you look at the spontaneous uh, uh, creatinine decrease. So it was the emergence of a new concept, the concept of artificial kidney-induced kidney injury, the risk of early ORT. And this concept of artificial kidney-induced kidney injury was confirmed in the start ki trial since in this very important trial, renal replacement therapy dependence after 90 days was higher in the early strategy, 10% compared with the delayed strategy, 6%. Finally, I would, li would like to uh, alert you uh, on a very uh, dangerous methodological trap. We published this uh, editorial in Critical Care a few uh, months ago with Paul Palewski. So what is this trap? When you perform a two-harm randomized control trial, you should compare the data according to group of randomization. This is very important uh, uh, thing. But some ones want to artificially dividing the uh, delayed strategy into two so-called subgroup, patients who finally receive RRT and patients who did not receive renal replacement therapy. And after this artificial div division, they wanted to compare the outcome between the so-called subgroup with the whole group of early RT strategy. This comparison of the so-called subgroups is not interpretable for two reasons. Indication bias, patients who finally receive RRT in the delayed strategy were those whose status worsened. This is a time varying, varying confounding. 
And the immortal time bias, it is not possible to identify a patient in the delayed group who will actually receive RT at the time of the inclusion, but only, but only at the end of the follow-up. So to show you an example of this trap, you can see uh, a postdoc analysis of Akiki. If you consider that the early strategy is the reference with the hazard ratio at 1.0, and you look at the so-called subgroup of patients who receive RIT in the delayed group, we, you will wrongly conclude that delayed RIT is associated with increased birth mortality. But if you do the same with the so-called subgroup of patients who never receive RIT, you will wrongly conclude that never start RIT is a good thing to do. This is a nonsense. And after matching on severity score, of course, the difference disappears. So this kind of argument are fallacious arguments. This is not good science to uh, do this comparison. And all trialists, methodologists, and biostatisticians will confirm this. So to summarize my talk, the wait and see approach reduces the need for RRT. It's good for healthcare finance, probably less good for industry and for doctors who work for the industry. The wait and see approach does not impact survival. We have now a very high level of evidence to, uh, to say that. And be careful of the methodologi tra methodological trap. And finally, the wait and see approach is associated with more rapid renal function recovery. This is a concept of artificial kidney induced kidney injury, but we need more data on this. Finally, to conclude, this approach should become the standard of care. Thank you very much for your attention.